Hey guys, Cody here, and I want to talk to you about making art in, well, abstract art in Arizona. And kind of, well, the first part of this video, I might do more, is just really the uh, the challenges um, of making art here in Arizona. Because it's definitely a unique place to, to make art. Um, so I really, this in this video, I want to talk about kind of the, like making art inside and outside and, and really the challenges of that. So <clears throat> first off, there's a couple of different things to kind of keep in mind. Like if you're starting art or just to kind of get a behind the scenes of, of like how, you know, what it's like for me to make art here. Um, the first thing is, you know, you got to think about the room, like how much room you need in order to be able to make that thing. Uh, another thing you need to think about is the materials, right? So the materials in which you use and you need to think about kind of the climate, all right? So obviously being out here, you know, being in Arizona, we deal with, you know, the, the, uh, the extreme heat, pretty much like, well, extreme six months out of the year, but hot probably eight or nine months out of the year. And then the other two to three months are, they're cooler, right? Right now it's nice, it's beautiful, but only because it's overcast. Um, but anyway, so, and, and what I've learned over the last two years of kind of dealing with that is just some of the pros and cons of working inside and outside. So I wanted to talk to you about that today. So let's start with inside. Well, if you're inside, I mean, obviously if you have like your own studio or a part of your house or something like that, that you can work in, that is ideal. Okay, so having your own place to work I think is just good psychologically because you can go there and you know that it's time to create right so to have a space like that is really good um, and I think it's great because you're able to to kind of say hey this is my studio this is where I go to create and you can go there um, so I think that's really good and I honestly out of everything that's ideal um, and if you're inside then you can you know there's a lot of good positive things about that like first off you can control the climate so if you're here in Arizona I mean you got to deal with either super heat or fluctuating um, climates well if you're inside obviously you can control that pretty well with you know with AC with a heat or whatever um, also you know inside obviously there's less distractions than if you're outside like I I paint outside my videos very clearly show that and right now I'm recording outside because it's nice outside also it's very noisy in my house so that being the case um, if you're inside you know generally you deal with less distractions and you can you know you also don't have to deal with kind of the elements like right now it's overcast and if I were to paint outside it might rain on it I've had that happen to me so obviously that's a challenge when you're trying to create art outside. Um, but inside, you know, you, you're out of the elements, it's less distracting, and you know, it's climate controlled pretty much, which is good for paint, especially if you paint, if you're a painter, you know, you want a controlled environment so that you get the same like consistency and results every time. Um, now, some drawbacks to, to working inside, you know, especially if you're a painter, um, like an abstract artist, uh, well, I guess it doesn't matter if it's abstract. I don't know why I said that, but if you're an artist, um, being inside, there's a couple of things to watch out for. First is the space. So depending on the size of the paintings that you create, um, that's obviously going to dictate how much space you need, but they can, paintings can take up, or even sculptures if you do that or something like that, but paintings can take up a lot of space real fast, especially if you do large paintings like I do. I mean, I can't create in the same space that I store my paintings because they just take up so much room. And I, obviously, I, I have the curse that a lot of people have where I create a lot more than I sell. So they just tend to stack up and you want to try to put them somewhere, you know, where they're going to be safe. Well, it's safest in a climate controlled environment. So usually inside. Um, but if you can't do that, then you know then you have to put them outside and then you run the risk of them warping or stretching or whatever but anyway coming back so you're gonna run out of room real fast unless you do only small paintings and you can stack those up somehow or you have a painting rack or something like that but if you don't then you're gonna run out of space second is uh, the, the materials you use kind of control where you can 
you know, work. If you work with paint, sometimes paint is toxic or the f if there's fumes to it or if you use paint thinners or extenders or any of that stuff, you have to work in a ventilated area. So t for me, um, I can't work like that inside. I couldn't paint my paintings inside because I use gloss enamel, basically house paint. It smells. Now, I don't mind the smell, but I have to do it outside because if I did it inside, it'd probably give me headaches or lungs, like issues with my lungs, stuff like that. I just can't do it. Um, but I mean, if you use probably just regular acrylic, you're probably okay. You still, you know, still want to ventilate if possible. Um, lastly is, I don't know about anyone else, but when I paint inside and I'm in a studio or a room for a long time, I start to feel boxed in. And I hate that feeling. I guess you, I guess it would be claustrophobia. I'm not 100% sure because I don't deal with that on a normal basis, just being in my house. Like, but I start to feel kind of closed in. Maybe that's just me. I don't know if anyone else deals with that or not. But um, that's again, that's just something that I've dealt with. Um, now, obviously, if you can't work in the house, some people have like where they'll paint in their garage, right? Or they'll paint uh, in like a shed or something that's out back or on the side of the house or something that's probably second best because if you can paint because then you know you may not have the climate control like if you're in your garage unless it's like insulated and closed up um, and treated like another room you're still gonna have that fluctuation in temperature because most garages are very inefficient like as far as uh, keeping heat or cold out um, or if you're in a shed and it doesn't it's not really insulated or you know there's no heater or anything like that that you're gonna deal with those fluctuations in temperature. However, it's still better than painting outside just because you're protected from the elements. So if it rains and you're still in your garage or you know a shed or something, it doesn't really matter, right? Also, you can probably store your paintings there and be okay. But again, you might run out of room. So again, just another thing to think about. Uh, so let's talk about painting outside, which is what I do only because I do it out of necessity. So it's not that I per se like to paint outside, although I do enjoy just being outside. Like I, I really enjoy the weather and I enjoy just nature, like this being out, out in the overcast. If I wasn't worried it was gonna rain on me, I probably would be painting right now. But because I, I know it might ruin the painting, I'm not going to. Um, now I could paint something small on this table behind me, but Regardless, um, painting outside has its own set of challenges. First off, I mean, you have to deal with the elements. So rain or wind, which if you're trying to paint something and it flips over, it's probably gonna get ruined, which I've had it happen. Um, or you're dealing with dust, especially out here in Arizona. I mean, there's just dust everywhere and everything is always dirty, like just 100% of the time. So. Um, so dust is a huge thing that I deal with, especially painting outside, like, like I'll paint a painting and then a dust storm will come over it and then it just like gets in the paint and I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> and sometimes I use so much paint that I can't move that painting until it dries a little bit. And if it's like semi cool, but not super hot, then it doesn't even, doesn't even dry right away. Um, but you know aside from the elements then you've got the temperature so when it's cold i mean the paint takes forever to dry so that's kind of annoying i've had paintings that i left them out overnight outside and they did not dry so you know you you're dealing with again just fluctuating temperature if it's not inside where it's climate controlled then you don't know how fast or slow it's going to dry now on the flip side when it's summer and i'm trying to paint Dude, that paint will dry in minutes, sometimes even seconds. If it's a very thin coat of paint, dude, it'll dry in like a minute or two. I kid you not, it will dry that fast. So I've had to kind of learn and like navigate um, dealing with that challenge of the heat drying it super fast. So what I'll do is like, depending on the look I'm going for is I'll just, you know, scrape the paint in the pattern that I want it and then it will dry like almost immediately. Now this is good if you are making layered paintings, um, you know, so that you know it'll dry and then you can get onto the next layer. So I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but just know it is a challenge to paint out here in the summer. Okay, even if I do it in the garage, it still dries super fast. So that's probably my biggest, biggest, biggest challenge in 
in making art here in Arizona, a painting in Arizona, I should say, is the heat. Um, it just dries so fast. So you have to know what you're doing um, and just be prepared for that. Now, again, it's good if I'm trying to make a layered painting, but terrible if I'm trying to create a certain effect and then I have to go back over it. It's already dry. It's, it, yeah, it's bad. Um, now, another thing of working outside is that it's very distracting. You know, people just walk up to me while I'm painting. Oh, yeah, just, uh, and it's not that I don't mind talking to people, but like if I'm focused, it's very hard to stay focused and talk to people. But again, I mean, that's just a challenge I've had to work with. But overall, I mean, I love I love working outside. I love painting, and and I've just had to learn to overcome some of these challenges. Um, but I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of of what to look for if you're making art in Arizona, but also, you know, what it's like for me as an artist in Arizona, because if you're not from around here, then, you know, just thought I'd give you kind of a glimpse. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, please check out other videos or the link on my site. Um, I have a blog post version of this and, uh, you know, like the video or share it or something or check out my site for available pieces. But uh, other than that, I hope that you have an awesome rest of your day. Take care.